Um, it's hard to tell actually. We do, I'd say we do creative programming and, and usually with a um, strong focus on, on interaction stuff with, with real world interaction but also with um, big screens and, and, and projections. So far we always wanted to have um, some sort of direct collaboration but usually it is now that uh, we get booked for a VJ gig and then we meet the music musicians before and then we just do something to the sound we hear right then. Actually very often we when I don't have a clear idea of what I want to do. Usually, usually it's, um, I don't know, stumble upon this library or this technique and then just think, yeah, I could try that. And then it's somehow somewhere in between you get an idea. Yeah, I could go into this direction. And then at the end you tweak that it looks nice and then somehow you ended up with something. It's usually not both ways. Somehow uh, when I began programming and doing things with physics, then I looked at like at the river, how it flows or water, I looked at them differently than I did before. So, but on the other hand, you're also programming something and then you're thinking, oh, this looks like water. Uh, so maybe go more into this direction. So I think it's a little bit of a t how you can easily learn how something works if you program it. Uh, program. Um, with programming, it's um, you can do whatever you want. At, at some point, you you. It's, um, I wouldn't say biblical, but it's like there's nothing in the beginning or, or just as you have in history, it's just an empty space and then you can start throwing things in there and, and, thing, and then you can create things you see in nature and because you created them more or less yourself, um, you can understand how it might work in the bigger scale of, of your screen or of your one of my somehow breakthrough was I once did um, something with, with Toxis and um, Verlet physics that they're in a box and it just moves around. And then I found out that I can, at the beginning I had like normal gravity, just gravity down and flows. And then I began like moving the gravity around. So it goes from left to right to top, freeze it. And, and that was like, um, I liked it visually just because of the, the, the shapes you got. But I also liked it in a sense of um, experimenting. So it was like, I couldn't do this with, with actual water in a, in, a, in a tank, but here I can go do it on a smaller scale and just imagine what it might look like. So as some you've built, I mean, your system will always be in a box, like pretty, far away from, from the actual reality we have outside just because of its nature that it, it's built on something entirely different, just like bits and bytes. Uh, you can like influence this with, with a mouse or a connect or whatsoever, so this gives you some sort of interaction, but it's still inside. But I think the biggest interaction is, especially with, with large like an environmental like systems you're building, the biggest one is, is in your head because all the output you have on screen is just giving you an idea of how the system looks inside and at some point inside and at some point you get the, um, the mechanics behind it and the, the physics and how it, it works and at this point the biggest connection is actually right in your brain because you can imagine beyond the image you're seeing which is only a small part of the whole thing Oh, it changes your thinking on so many levels. I mean, but first of all, you always have to say, as you said, it's a tool. So I think we should never forget that it is a tool. And, and just because of a tool, we won't uh, change the way we are human or how we behave or interact. It, we just do it differently. And one of, and one of the most obvious changes is, of course, like uh, internet and, and that you can be in touch like all the time is one of the I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would disagree on this, but for me it's somehow the first time with computers you can kind of building what people have in their minds, especially in, in a scientific way that you can prove it and try it out and, and do it in, in a smaller scale. And a smaller thing, um, if I 
had um, a computer in, in, in just when I went to school and could do things like processing, I, I guess um, I would have done more math and be more interested in math and, and science overall. This is also, I mean, based, in theory, you could build the whole universe inside your computer. You just don't have enough power and then you'll never get there and it would be boring to build the same thing all over again. But in theory, you could. And, that's something I find kind of stunning. Uh, I hope there are not, no limitations, and I don't think there will be. The only limitation is time, and, and we probably won't live to see things we would think is a limitation right now. But I do think it gets more and more complex. And it's, I mean, it's, it's such a young medium as well, and it's evolving so fast. I mean, the curve is, is steep like little things you have ever seen before, so there's a lot to come, yeah. Mm. I mean, we, you could start off with, with the point cloud of this, and then, I don't know, at some point when I say, talking about water or physical systems, all the points you could just flush it or turn into water or something like that, just to illustrate the thing you've been talking about, just as...